welcome to our info session on the doctoral networks of the Marie Skodowska Curie actions. I'm Isabel Spüler and one of the three national contact points for the Marie Skodowska Curie action, short NCP for MSCA in Switzerland. In this info session, you will learn about the doctoral network called 2024. So what this funding is all about, what you should consider when preparing a proposal, what the funding covers and what not. And in the second part, I will explain how Swiss institutions can currently participate and receive national funding to recruit PhD candidates to complement the network. In order to benefit from our support and services, I want to introduce very quickly who we are. You research is a non-profit organization with offices all over Switzerland. We have the mandate from the Swiss government to inform and advise researchers in Switzerland on the European Research and Innovation Programme Horizon Europe. National Contact Points, NCPs, are working at the network office in Bern and are experts of specific funding schemes and programmes of Horizon Europe. They have to focus on the details of a call and know all the updates from the European Commission. Advisors in the regional offices have the overview on the different funding opportunities and can support you in questions related to the implementation in your region once a grant gets funding. So please also contact the EU-Research Regional Office when you're preparing an MSCA doctoral network application. Also, when you are from the non-academic sector, there are company advisors in every region to support your Horizon Europe journey. So now that you know a little more who we are and what we do at your research, let's approach the Marius Skodowska Curie Action, short MSCA. The MSCA comprises of five actions, while the postdoctoral fellowship is an individual funding scheme for ambitious postdocs, the doctoral networks are, is a very competitive funding scheme to train the next generation of highly skilled doctoral candidates. So while every action has a different focus in its own rules, they share common values. All actions promote excellence in research and innovation. They aim to enhance knowledge and skill development of researchers. All actions are open to all domains of research and they all have the objective to enhance the collaboration based on III, international, intersectoral and interdisciplinary. The Marius Kolovska Curie Action thus supports researchers from all over the world to work on research and innovation projects in Europe and to advance their career. So the main objective of the doctoral networks is to train the next generation of scientists with an international and intersectoral network. You find all expected outcome described in the work program. So I would like to highlight some central outcomes. The doctoral network should lead to improved employability and career prospect of PhD candidates within but also outside academia through new skills and competences. The doctoral network should provide possibility of networking and communication for PhD candidates with scientific peers, but also general public to broaden the impact. And for the participating institution, the doctoral network should strengthen the quality of PhD training programs and supervision. The doctoral network should enhance international cooperation across sectors and disciplines. So with these expected outcomes in mind, let's look closer at the scope of this funding scheme. The doctoral network are implemented through the collaboration of institutions within but also outside academia, meaning it is a call where a consortium with one coordinator applies for funding. I will explain more about the consortium a bit later. So the network will then implement a PhD program for a cohort of doctoral candidates who not only work on a research program, but can also benefit from an excellent training program and develop their skills and competences for their career. 
it's very important to keep in mind. A doctoral network is a combination of both research project and training program. The MSCA also sets the rule that all PhD candidates should be enrolled in a PhD program. PhD candidates can be recruited between minimum three years, uh, sorry, three months, and maximum 36 months, so three years maximum. And in the joint doctorate, the maximum is 48 months. So maybe some institutions or countries have the rules that the PhD should be finalized in three years, but for many it actually takes more time to obtain the titles. So despite these different realities, the MSC Doctoral Networks has defined a maximum of 36 months of funding. So please discuss carefully in the application phase what this implies for your institutions. For example, do you have own funding to continue employment for the fourth year? So I would like to talk a little more about the candidates, since the doctoral network is actually all about them and their career development. It is important to emphasize that the recruitment of PhD candidates involved in such a network needs to be transparent, open and merit-based. The candidates need to also comply with the mobility rule, meaning a PhD candidate should not have spent more than 12 months in the country of the recruiting host in the three years before the date of recruitment. To put it simple, it is not possible to recruit a PhD candidate that has already done one's master in the same institution and lived in the same country for more than 12 months before starting the PhD. PhD candidates in the MSA doctoral networks are young researchers who have recently moved into the country of the future host or will do so for their project. So I introduced before the consortium applying for the doctoral network funding and I would like to discuss the different roles within a consortium. A consortium should comprise of at least three entities from different EU member states or Horizon Europe associated countries. So there is one coordinator and several beneficiaries from an EU member state or associated country, and it is possible to have associated partners included. The coordinator and the beneficiaries sign the grant agreement and can recruit PhD candidates, so-called MSC fellows, with the EU funding. Associated partners don't sign the grant agreement and don't receive funding from Europe to recruit fellows. However, they can host secondments or offer training to the network. Any institution also in third countries, non-associated to Horizon Europe, can join a doctoral network as a associated partner. So now you know about the expected outcomes, the conditions to participate, and in the next step, I will introduce the different modalities. So while in the standard doctoral network, the most common type of applications, it is basically the easiest to apply. In addition, there are two types, the industrial and the joint doctorate. So standard modality means there are 540 person months funded. So you can basically recruit 15 PhD candidates for 36 months. There are no additional specific rules so you have the maximum flexibility to create a doctoral network program that is most meaningful for the PhD candidate to advance their career based on international, intersectoral and interdisciplinary training. In the industrial network, there's also a maximum of 540 person months available and at least one entity has to be from the non-academic sector. The PhD candidate has to spend at least 50% of their time in the non-academic sector. And there's a joint supervision prescribed, a supervisor from the academic and one from the non-academic sector. So, meaning industry, NGOs, startups. Now, the third modality, the joint doctorate, is the most challenging modality to implement, since there should be a joint degree, a joint government structure and a joint supervision for the PhD candidate. However, the incentive to apply for a joint doctorate is also high. So the person months is the same, 540 person months funding. Fellowship can be 48 months. 
So in this year's call, it is new that in such a joint degree, at least only one institution needs to be from a EU member state or associated country. Now that I've explained the three types of networks, let me quickly mention two rules that all proposals should consider. First, the 40% 40, 40 rules. It says that no more than 40% of the total European financial contribution may be allocated to the beneficiaries in the same country. And the second rule is about resubmission. The doctoral network is a highly competitive call for funding. And in order to regulate the number of applications, there is the restriction of resubmission. So proposals can't be resubmitted if they get a score of lower than 80% in the previous year. So in the next minutes, I would like to explain how much funding will be provided once an application is successful. You can find all the numbers in the recently adopted work program. Also, the country correction coefficient and the allowances have been increased for this year's call. First, it's important to note, the MSA provides funding with a so-called unit cost, and you don't need to predefine a budget for your network. Depending on the country of the recruiting institution and how many candidates will be recruited, the total budget will be calculated. And this will be done automatically in part A during the submission process. So you will find unique contribution per recruited researcher per month of employment. There's on one hand the so-called contribution for recruited researcher that will result in the monthly gross salary of the PhD candidate. And on the other hand, the institutional unit contribution that comprises the funding for the research, training and networking cost, as well as the management and indirect cost. So first, for the contribution of the recruited researcher, there is 4,010 euro living allowance multiplied by the so-called country correction coefficient. In addition, there is for every researcher every month 710 euro so-called mobility allowance. And in addition, if applicable, 660 euro family allowance. This is paid for those who are married or have an equivalent status in a relationship or a dependent child. And if the status changes, this will also change the gross salary of the candidate. When we look at the institutional contribution, there is every month 1,600 euro reserved for the research project, training and also networking of the PhD candidate to implement the fellowship. Last but not least, there is 1,200 euro every month for the management and indirect cost. So when you apply for the total 540 person months, this results in a total budget of about or more than 4 million euros, depending on the countries involved. Switzerland has a very high country correction coefficient of 1.638. And with this information, I want to move on to explain how Swiss institutions can actually participate in a doctoral network. Switzerland is a so-called non-associated third country and still has to negotiate its association to Horizon Europe. The implications are the following. Swiss institutions can't participate as beneficiaries in a doctoral network. Swiss institutions can only participate as so-called associated partner. An associate partner, Swiss institutions can't claim any European funding. They can't recruit official MSCA fellows in the doctoral network. As associate partner, Swiss institutions can host the conference and offer training to the MSCA fellows. And the Swiss State Secretariat for Education, Research and Innovation short series provides national funding to recruit PhD candidates who would complement the network. These candidates are not official MSA fellows, but so-called SERI-funded doctoral network fellows. It's very important to note that SERI can only finance PhD candidates with the same rules and conditions like MSA fellows. This implies recruitment has to be open and transparent. PhD candidates have to comply with the MSA mobility rule. And the Swiss budget should not exceed more than 40% of the European budget. SERI will also pay the same allowances considering the Swiss 
correction coefficient as defined by the current work program. So the maximum funding for the standard in industrial doctoral candidates are also 36 months, while for the joint doctoral candidate it can be 48 months. So now I would like to move on and tell you what is important to consider when you're writing a proposal. First, please describe the distinction that the Swiss funded PhD candidates are not official fellows, but PhD candidates working under the same conditions and rules contributing to the objective and the impact of the network. The project of the PhD candidates recruited in Switzerland also needs to be included in the proposal and go through the evaluation as part of the entire proposal. It is not possible to claim funding from the Swiss government if the project is not described in part B1. Please be aware, the Swiss budget is basically on top of the European budget and not listed in part A. The financial contribution of Switzerland can only be mentioned in a so-called letter of commitment. You find such a template on our website. So beside the supporting documents on our MSC website of your research, I would like to introduce our support for the Swiss applicants. We offer proposal review service with a focus on how the Swiss participation is described. This service is provided on a first-come, first-served basis. In addition, we strongly recommend to check the handbook provided by MSA Net, a collaborative work by national contact points across Europe. Here you find tips and advice on every section of the proposal. The MSA Net project also realized a matchmaking platform where you can find potential partners for your DN application. So let's assume you are prepared um, and with your consortium you have a great proposal, you submit it on time, on deadline 27th of November 2024, 5 p.m. The, then the evaluation process will start. So three experts will read your proposal and agree on a final score. And based on this final score, your proposal will be ranked and the final score should be above 90 or 95 uh, in order to get funding, depending on the competition. I hope that in this info video, I could transmit the most important information on the MSA Doctoral Network Hall 2024 and how Swiss partners can participate and get national funding if the application is successful. I wish you now all the best in the proposal writing phase and don't hesitate to contact us for any open questions.